Hello and welcome to another Saturday stroll through the orchids here in Denver, Colorado in my living room. I was hoping that this lovely lady would be open, but we may have to wait until next week. So let's get started. I'm going to start up here on the top shelf. This one back here is the Sandiriana that is now in a self-watering LECA setup, just loving her life. Finishing off that leaf right there to the right. And next to her is Miss Sunshine. Beautiful yellow flowers. I just love her. And then back there is Little Leaves or Small Leaves, renamed, I think I renamed her Pink Lady because of her blooms. But looks like she is, thought she was working on another leaf, but nope, she's still finishing off that one sticking in our face there. This is, I can't remember and I can't see the tag, but she's not doing much of anything. Recently repotted. Back there is Kaleidoscope. Um, kind of a poor leaf right there, but you see she's got another one coming out right there. And then this one here recently repotted into this lovely plastic pot with fir bark, orchiata bark, and perlite. This is Momoto, I believe is how you say that. Just finished blooming. Well, not finished. I cut her spike to encourage her to grow. And if you'd like to use this media, and there's charcoal in there, but all of these supplies that I repotted her with are from the Orchid Supply Store. If you'd like a 12% discount, go to orchidsupplystore.com, use coupon code TRISH, and get your 12% off and it is a multi-use coupon. Moving on over to Miss Yucky Dawn here. She was the one that was in the big white pot with the little slats. I finally got into her. She's been in that pot for three years. So this mixture here recently repotted. This is not a orchid supply store pot. This is one I've recycled for one I've already had, but the media inside is from orchid supply. So we've got small orchiata bark, fir bark, perlite, a little bit of the moss because she was in a moss and bark mixture. But since putting her in here, her leaves are definitely starting to perk up a little bit. So I think she just needed to be refreshed. Then we have this one here that recently got its spike cut off as well. She is in a self-watering pot and I did not name the flower. So I will put a picture of the flower somewhere on the screen and Someone name it for me. Then we have Miss Lark Song working on that beautiful leaf right there. I absolutely adore her blooms. And then over here we have a no ID that I like to call Morgan. Beautiful pink flowers. Never rebloomed for me since I got her back in 2020. She's got lots of roots in the pot, lots of growth. And I counted if she were going to multi spike for me. There's a potential for four spikes there. Now, she's probably not gonna do four spikes. I'd just like to get one more. That's it. While we're up here, let's just look at the summer fowls that 90% are in self-watering. So we have the summer rose blue star back in spike, recently cut her spike a couple of months ago. While she was in spike, she grew those two leaves right there. She's working on another leaf, and as you can see, she's got lots and lots of roots. I'm thinking of putting her into one of the larger self-watering setups as well, just because she, she's producing some roots, and the bubbles are getting less and less when I water. We've got Hieroglyphica right here, I'm working on some buds, senescing that back leaf. And then we've got Phalaenopsis abonensis, which has she has three spikes so she's got the one you can see so she's got those two there and then she's got one behind this leaf here and look who's in bloom again miss taishing fly eagle let me see if i can get a a good zoom in on her if not once i get off the chair we'll look at her again but she's got a second bud coming as well as working on another spike roots just i love this lady love this lady and each blooming the blooms are getting larger and larger so I know eventually she'll tap out but I feel like that's the sign that she's getting happier and happier Yapon Evergreen has a bud starting here 
and then we have a second spike going backwards with the bud. And then in scriptiosis, I also put in a large self-watering setup. And I got these off of Amazon. I will, if I remember, post the link to them in the description. No affiliation, just love those pots. And the LECA is from Orchid Supply Store. If you haven't seen the video where I repotted the gold staff into LECA, this stuff is amazing. So this was the second bag that I purchased and it wasn't a fluke with the first bag. This second bag, I boiled it twice, set it overnight, no floaters, uh, PPM of like 102, soaked it one more night and PPM was like 15. Love it, love it. She has six spikes on her. So we've got three over here. We've got one, two, and then that one, three. She came to me with two and she's grown those four since she's been in my care. And I am slowly correcting her magnesium deficiency. It's just gonna take a little bit. And I may need to move her because she is really close to that light. I don't wanna burn the leaves, but there's no heat that comes off of these barinas. Um, we've got me a little air plant. Well, actually I got two purchased at my local garden center, Nick's. Got some little pups coming up down there. And all I do with her is I soak her for about two minutes once a week, set the mount upside down to let all the water drain out from in between the crevices for about 20 minutes, hang her back up. She's doing fine. She's about seven feet away from the east facing window. And then we have the Geoho Summer. Which one is this? Summer Love. And she's finally coming into her own. So she does have a new leaf growing there, but she's also more importantly has more roots growing. So I did put um, some more of the Leca up at the top to encourage those roots to go down into it. And we have my Belina Carula, looks the same. All she's done since I've had her is grow, finish this leaf because she came with this one starting. And then she's done this one and hasn't done anything since. Um, there are roots in there because I did take her out just to make sure. So she does have some roots in there. She's just taking her time getting settled in. And I may need to move her because she might just be getting too much light. So I may need to move her maybe to the front where it's a little more dappled. Anybody who grows uh, Belinas, let me know if she's just getting way too much light because we're gonna look at another Belina that doesn't quite get this amount of light and she's just, boom, exploding with pleasure. Um, the Vandopsis parishia cross back to sibling is growing this beautiful leaf and look at all of the roots so she's slowly getting roots down in the bottom but she's growing roots so that's wonderful this is my Belina Samara that came with this leaf growing she's finished this leaf here and look how much larger it's getting so I am excited to see this big girl grow up I got this one from Carter and Holmes. Get that leaf off there. Hold on. Uh, there we go. Um, over here, another Belina. Um, this is one of the ones that I got where I got the two pack because they were out of one I wanted. So they sent me an extra and it sent me the same thing. Again, grew this sorry leaf and then this one and hasn't done much of anything else. But again, lots of root activity. And then we have Mini Mark who recently got her spike cut maybe about a month and a half, two months ago, working on a lovely new leaf there. We have the Phalaenopsis Sogo Vivian Leafs Edge that if you haven't seen the video, I will post it below, but she had no roots in the pot when we took her out. All she had were aerial roots. And just to show, you can use aerial roots as a backup. All of the longer roots that you see in here are those aerial roots. Now she's growing some new roots as well, but you can use those aerial roots as backup, so don't cut them off. And then this was the latest leaf that she grew before she's uh, pushed out a bloom, which I did cut. I don't see anything new coming in quite yet. She's a little bit slower, I find, in her growth pattern. Whoops, let me fix that. Growth pattern than the regular Sogo Vivian, non-variegated. And maybe it's the variegation in here that causes that. Still kind of watching that. But this one grew the leaf to the right. I bought her in spike. She did spike again. Again, cut those leaves. And then she's growing the one on the left. 
and she's got roots now crawling out of the pot, roots going in, so I'm pretty excited about that. Let me get off the chair so we can take a look at the Phalaenopsis Yin's Black Eagle Bud. One moment. The way I had that chair, it was kind of in the middle of the shelving area and set away so we could see the girls up at the top. I was afraid to lean over too much and then just fall. I didn't want y'all to see that. So this is the Phalaenopsis Yin's Black Eagle. Like I was saying at the beginning of the video, I wish she would have opened, but look at what is coming. Look at that beautiful, I don't know if the camera is really showing the purple lip and then the pink center with those yellowish green blooms, sepals and petals, I cannot wait with another one right behind it. So this is her first blooming with me. I got this one from Brookside Orchids back in July of 2021. So I've had her for almost two years and this is her first time to bloom for me. And she's only grown two leaves, but she's got lots and lots of roots in this pot. So she's settling in nicely and I'm hoping that she does the same as our Yin's Black our Taishing uh, Fly Eagle, that over here where she just every once in a while pushes me out a nice bloom. And because I do grow in my living room with controlled temperatures, these girls do grow year round. Now they do slow down a little bit in the winter, I've noticed, but they do grow year round. And this one has bloomed on and off all year. So very slowly, let me take you down to the next shelf. So I did move my Hippodamia here under the light because this one over here, this piece here was not doing anything. So it's two separate pieces. When I got her and took her out of the pot, it ended up being three. Grew one outside last year and it did not make it. But let's see if I can find it. Since putting her under this Barina light, and she was hanging in the corner with the light on her, so it's not like she was in the dark, but she does have that beautiful new growth coming off on this side. And this one has two directions of growth. So the one that you see right back there on the left, that is one growth finishing. And then this one right here in the front is finishing off as well. Of course, she's still years away from blooming for me, but I'm very pleased now with the progress that she's making and she's pushing out lots of roots. So loving that. Uh, this is the big white cat Leia that I believe is the wedding song or a cross of the wedding song. This one here is its latest growth. Now, she is leaning, but this orchid, when she was nice and full, the leaves tend to have kind of a droopy look to them. Kind of like this, a little firmer, but see how it kind of bends over? So I think that's just a characteristic of this particular one. So once she blooms again, I'm gonna try to ID her because she's not what she was sold to me as. This is my green leopard that I got from the Big Leaf Orchids. Last year she grew this growth right here that you see and this is this year's growth that she started on towards the end of winter. And over here we have the Dewey Forest Kudos, just pushing out lots and lots of growth. Eventually, this one is going to bloom for me. Let's see, did I get her 19 or 20? No, I've had her now three years as of April. I got her in April of 2020, so she should be coming up to blooming size. Keyword in my sentence is should. Here is the yellow bird, just living her little life. We have the Lelia Purpurata Carina. That, look at this stonker. Look at that stonker. Loving that. Look at all the roots in there. That is just wonderful. And then we have the Lois McLean, oh, McNeil, sorry, the Lois McNeil. Now, this was the growth that she last uh, finished up. There is no bloom coming from this one, but maybe, boom, 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 boom. Look at that. Look at that little stonker coming up there with all those roots. Loving that too. And she's starting to grow outside of the pot. Initially, I had wanted to put her outside. I think I'm going to wait one more year, let her get a little bit stronger, a few more roots in there, probably grow her outside next season. 
Uh, back here we have the Maikai, Brassicanthe Brasa Maikai, that has this lovely growth right here. And then we have the Sogo, uh, the Sarik Wax Silk Ball that I got from Paula over at Hillbilly Orchids. That grew this one for me last year. I did grow her outside last year, decided to grow her inside this year. But she grew, well, she had started this one, finished it, finished this while she was outside last season in 2022. And we have our new growth for 2023. And I'm thinking that that might be another little growth getting ready to start. So we may end up with two directions of growth this year. Fingers crossed. And then this one is the LC um, Aussie Sunset Cosmic Fire uh, crossed with LC Spring Fire Lynette. Number one that I got from the Orchid Supply Store. Might have to get in this way. Let's see if we can find it. Nope, can't see it that way. Let's see if we can see it this way. Let's see. Do you see it down there? Can you see the growth? Beautiful. And she's getting lots of roots in the pot as well. Maxima uh, Carula that I got from Yoshi as a freebie when I got my Shaliriana from him. These are the two growths that were rather small when we repotted back into this clay pot. And then this is the third that was kind of small. So she settled in, hasn't skipped a beat. And then we've got my Jane Austen here. She is working on this new growth as well as lovely new roots. And then of course we have the Catlea Zip, otherwise known as the Lelia Zip, who still has this sheath that's green. This one here dried out really crunchy and just kind of fell off. So ended up cutting that one out. But we still have a green sheath here and look at the lovely new growth we're having this year. And she is putting out some more roots, although they are branching in there. I don't see any new roots yet for me. And then the Brassavola nodosa that was put in this pot a few months ago. Lots and lots and lots of new growth. So she's settling in nicely. And her roots are starting to go down into the pot as far as on the outside that we can see. I'm sure there's more on the inside, but I don't want to test that. My pink doll, that was a rather large plant when I initially got her, um, repotted and had to take her apart. I did send a piece to Paula because I know she loves the pinks. This one here I thought I had lost, so I said, well, well, let's put her in some bark with a little moss right below the rhizome, moss on top, not moss on top, bark on top, see what she does. Well, look what she's doing. Lovely new growth there. She does have an eye down here. It's probably not going to do anything, but this right here is the future of this lady here. And of course, we've got the lovely roots. And I don't have any really good pictures to post, so um, if you want to see what the blooms look like, you will have to go online for that. And here is Miss Goldstaff, still in her usual spot in her new little setup there. And as you can see, that leaf has continued to grow and it might actually make me a liar and grow to normal size. Either way, it did continue to grow. So if you end up breaking a leaf edge, as long as you don't break it all the way down, it will continue to grow. And I have actually broken it almost to the crown and it still grew, just individual orchids. And there's the spike coming out over here. She was growing up into the barina, so I had to position her so the spike would grow. Well, if I can get it into focus out from underneath there. Uh, we have the Tadia Blush, Tadia Pink Lucky right here. This one is, she looks like she needs a repot, but she's only been in this pot for a year. And she did grow two leaves, lost two leaves, and now she's working on this one, recently bloomed for me last year. And then this is the Lucky uh, Looseberry, sorry, Felnops Looseberry that had the two spikes that we just cut off a few weeks ago. And then we'll go over there in a minute. Here is the DPTS black spots, growing roots, roots. So she is also in um, media from the orchid supply store. And speaking of which, this is the Phalaenopsis that Ken sent back in October. 
she grew this leaf spiked and grew this leaf and now she is trying to get some roots going on in there not much happening with her and i feel like i'm going to name this one ken because ken sent it he's the orchid supply store owner so this is going to be phalaenopsis no id ken let me move myself down here a minute sorry if i'm making anyone dizzy so this is another soft clouds that did finally bloom out of this setup. She had bloomed before, but this setup here, she's not a very good looking plant really, but she is growing a leaf. And you know, this, I've decided with the soft clouds, if I lose one, not a big deal because I also have one back there. That is also soft clouds and I have the three on the mount. I have another one on the bottom shelf we're gonna look at here momentarily. But she started on this leaf while she was still in spike and stop that and now she's working on another new leaf lots and lots of aerial roots there and this is what i was talking about the other day with the looseberry they are aerial root producers like i just i love the wildness of that oh let me show y'all something real quick see if i can do it without the light nope let me stand up look at all those roots those are all from my summer fowls that are coming down i just think that is so pretty i know not everybody likes aerial roots i love them let me do it slowly. There we go. Um, this one here is the Harlequin Splash that recently got her cut, spike cut as well. Hoping that she starts on some leaf growth soon because her root tips are starting to get activated. Back here we have a no ID I call Andrea. This is a cakey of the mother plant. So she is already starting on her new leaf and I just cut that spike a couple of weeks ago. Normally it takes usually about a month before I can see new growth, but she's like, move aside, I got this. And then Miss Sarai 2.0. Again, if I see another one, I'll probably get another one because she's finally coming into her own, like finally. Look how little those leaves are though. But where did I see it? There it is. That's what I've been waiting on. So at least now I know she's producing some roots. Is that a root or a spike? I believe that is Hold on guys, let me get to the right angle here. And I believe that's a root. If it is a spike, it will get cut. And then down here, let me get off my stool, is the variegated bear's claw. I just think it's so cute. Fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy. If you get the chance to get this, I would so recommend it just for the texture. It's such a calming thing to just sit and feel these leaves. Back there, we have the Sun Circle that is working on that new growth right there, and she's got roots in the pot. My Hariella Retrocala, still blooming profusely on and off. And that right there is a piece of my little stars that I broke off the mount. I'm probably just gonna throw that piece away because I keep forgetting it's under there so it's not getting treated correctly. Because in that lava rock, I should actually be watering that a little more often than I do. Then we have a no ID pink lip here that is finally getting some roots in this pot. And she did grow this leaf here and is working on this one. And again, this is another one with really severe magnesium deficiency. Oh, let me show you guys. I'm so proud of myself. So I've had this Ser uh, Seruna for a couple of years now and she grew this growth, grew this one last year, and look what we've got coming already. I'm so proud of myself. I got it to bloom, not bloom, but grow another, another one. So eventually I wanna put this one on a mount. I know I've said that before, but I'm waiting on her to get a little bit bigger so that she has less strength. And she does have nice roots in that pot as well. And then we have the Hariella Retrocala three lip that has a bud back here. I recently had to readjust her because she was growing into the bark down. So I had to readjust her up a little bit and that's why this leaf is a little wanky. Then we have this one here, which is the Fritz Nicholas Spring Dance that did nothing for the longest. And last year, finally, because the growth had been looking kind of like this, kind of rusty, rusty looking. 
And then last year, she did do this one with a little bit right there, but we have a new growth, if I can get it into focus, right there. Do you see it? At the bottom of the stem. So she's starting to take off, and this is supposed to be a, like a, a small compact one. Another soft clouds back there working on her leaf. And then my Renanthera monachica is finishing this leaf here and working on another one there, as well as lovely root tips. I love those red root tips. They're just stunning. I broke that one off, but I think she might be working on activating again, but I accidentally broke that one off. I didn't realize it was stuck because I had her set back a little bit further and it was stuck to this pot and I just ripped it off. But she's a um, small lava rock in this clay pot and she gets flushed every other day and then I soak her in anywhere from 100 to 250 parts per million of fertilizer or supplement depending on what she's doing and most of the time she's just being flushed through. So I don't know, should I be giving her more fertilizer or should I keep doing what I'm doing? And she is dusty. Just notice that. I actually forgot to show you two more over here in, on, the, on in around the grow shelf. One is, of course, another soft clouds. This was my very first mount I ever attempted. And she has some new roots on both sides, as well as this new leaf here. She did bloom for us as well. And then back here, we have the Hookeriana. Well, it's the Kingadium Deliciosum variation Hookeriana. And her blooms are, they're over. I just let them kind of drop on their own. But she is a continuous bloomer, so I will not be cutting that spike off. And she used to hang in a different spot, but there was a little bit of a draft. So I wanted to make sure not to lose her because this is a 2.0. I had one before. This is the second one. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end it here and we'll look at the rest of the orchids, or the orchids, if I can speak today, next Saturday. I hope you are enjoying your weekend. See you on the next one.